we get to, the A10 man cave. The A10 man cave, where we get to talk about some really cool things that's very easily relatable to your own personal life, and that would be uh, competition. Um, yeah. Because today, um, we're going to talk about eliminating competition. So, Game of Thrones. Wow, okay. So, you're, you're going that way. I was even thinking of sports. Okay. Or whatever. Whatever the case may be. I mean, to, to sum it up, we usually come up with a definition, and you know, when you're trying to, when you're going against another force or opponent to try and achieve a common goal, I guess that's a better way of doing it. Yeah. Now, the thing is, is that we want to eliminate that competition so we can win. So, I, I wasn't a Game of Thrones guy, so what did they do? Oh my God, they just kill each other everywhere. I was stark. And all right, so railroad companies. Right. You know, question that pops on my mind is like why would a company want to eliminate their competition it's all about the money yeah I mean as a drink and Dunkin Donuts right here <laughs> as, as they're doing well or as how's Hampton or Starbucks doing well I know the Starbucks just closed that was right near Dunkin Donuts so that might say something yeah they may have been able to eliminate that competition yeah, because of their location yeah. um, but we're gonna talk about it in the business sense but the first business that we're gonna address is um, is railroads so when we're looking at competition competition can get it can get pretty fierce. I mean, if we're talking about in the sports world, how do you eliminate competition? Well, there's the, let me practice and try and become a better competitor and a better unit as a team. Um, in the sports world, if you're talking about major league sports, you know, they go out and buy the better athletes. Um, get the best coaches. Get the best coaches, they get the best stadiums, which generates more revenue, also known as money, it's just where they can go out and afford to do all that stuff. So we're gonna look at today, um, about eliminating competition and to give you some insight as to how Cornelius Vanderbilt eliminated competition. These, these quotes sum him up the great. <clears throat> these quotes uh, are ruthless. So, what do I care about law? Ain't I got the power? I mean, I, I think power, I'm thinking government, but yet he's not in government. No, because. But the people have the power in government. Because the, and I don't know if you relate this to your classes mm -hmm. as I do. By the end of the school year, my students know power and money are the same, same thing. thing. They're Absolutely. the same exact thing. If you've got the money, you've got the power. If you've got the power, you've got the money. So in terms of our, because in this unit, we're getting into your, your ridiculously rich business leaders of this particular time period. So for today's, if you're looking at today's business leaders, we could say Donald Trump before he became president because he was in the uh, real estate world and the hotel world. Um, Mark Cubas, right? The uh, Dallas Mavericks. Cuban. Cuban, sorry. The, the richest man in the world right now is the owner of, of Amazon, Jeff Bezos. There you go. Um, founder of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, the second richest man in the world is Bill Gates, Microsoft. And what I, my students don't understand about this age, you know, these people who are known as the captains of industry, sometimes referred to as robber barons yeah. because of their crooked tactics. Vanderbilt, um, Rockefeller, Carnegie, J.P. Morgan. They had more money than those guys than than Jeff Bezos. Yeah. Now, now when you look at okay, well, well, Rockefeller only had three billion dollars, <coughs> and Jeff Bezos has like three hundred billion. When you account for inflation, John D. Rockefeller is the richest man in American history. If you equate for inflation, uh, Vanderbilt was worth about four hundred and fifty billion dollars in today's money. So we just threw out a name that hopefully you probably heard of. Vanderbilt, you're thinking about Vanderbilt Planetarium in Centerport, right? Mm -hmm. um, we're also thinking about, uh, you bring out Rockefeller, said, which we'll get into. I said Carnegie, I said Carnegie. J.P. Morgan. Yeah, you said some names that you, you, you they're sure still know. around to this day. Here's another one from Cornelius <laughs> Vanderbilt. You have undertaken to cheat me. I won't sue you for the law is too slow. I'll ruin you. Yeah. This almost could be, I mean, I know you weren't a Game of Thrones fan, which right. you missed out. This is almost something that would be straight out of, like, House Lannister, you know, saying something like this to Ned Stark. Now, here's something else when we're looking at these quotes, since we're, we're talking about your big business leaders of today. Um, I don't know if these quotes were, saying, pub, were, were said publicly mm -hmm. or privately. In a journal. Or, or they found them in a document somewhere. But, yeah. I mean, today, if you're, if you're one of these big business owners today, you don't want to make this quote. Mm -hmm. or, or if you do, if you have said it, I'm sure they've said something like it. Yep. You don't want it being in the newspaper or anything. Because it, what it says is that, you know, I don't care about my workers. Well, that's what it, sometimes it implies, and it's all about. One thing that profit. big business always gets accused of, even today, is like profits before people. Absolutely. You know, that they care more about their money than they do about people. So when we're looking at Cornelius Vanderbilt, all right, originally, 
uh, one of his nicknames was the Commodore, and we may have hinted that in the, uh, the beginning of this unit of the Westward Expansion, when he was into shipping and particularly trade, it was with the canals, with steamboats. Now, had he stayed with that, uh, we probably wouldn't be talking about him right now. Um, we'd probably be talking about him because he did make money. However, he saw that the way of the future was trains. And we're not going to spend a great deal of time uh, really picking this political cartoon apart. More, more what I used this for was to get the students the to understand that the only railroad they know is the Long Island Railroad. Exactly. And to think that there were actually different companies operating <clears throat> different rail lines and in many cases competing against one another. I would have a railroad from New York to Philadelphia. You might have a railroad line from New York to Philadelphia. And that competition between us, so it was like now it's like it's so different the yes. way the railroads operate today. I really just use this for that. That's what I use it for too. Is, and, and the thing is that when you're looking here, I mean, who looks to be the powerful one in this cartoon? Over here, he's got one train, he's getting another. If I'm the Erie Railroad, maybe I'm thinking, I'm next. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, again, similar political cartoons. People just don't grow sideburns like this no, anymore. No, they do not. They but, don't. I just but, shaved and like it was just too much. But in terms of the power that you bring up, you know, here <clears throat> here he is, you know, the locomotive, you know, his face is right there indicating that power. And you even see it here where he's over um, all of these rail lines, he's got the lines in his hands and he's standing over the track. So now this I don't know if you make the relation in this PowerPoint, but but in mine, this was called the Colossus of Railroads. That's what Cornelius Vanderbilt was known as, and this picture is very similar <coughs> to one of the seven wonders of the world, the Colossus of Rhodes, which was a giant statue that, that, that hovered over the harbor in Rhodes, an ancient city, I think it was in Greece. So since you're bringing up colossal, of course, meaning huge, mm -hmm. massive, we should probably start with this vocabulary word, which I'll, I'll, I'll make it appear right here. Yes. The free, I love when he does that. The free enterprise system. Ooh. Because if we start with that definition, when we're looking at the free enterprise system, you know, you, private citizens have the ability to own their own property, uh, create their own business, decide what to make, decide how much to charge. Am I missing anything from there? No, not at all. all right, that's pretty much it. So when we look at that definition, when we look at that definition and then we come to like revisit it, um, there's going to be the dilemma as we move through, move forward in this chapter. You know, well, the, were these guys breaking rules? Maybe, maybe not. Was it unethical? These are some of the the things that we're going to come up to as we move forward in this chapter. Because the the reason why these guys wind up getting so big and powerful is that there weren't a lot of rules or regulations stopping them. Yeah. So that's going to be even one this of those one in this political cartoon. <coughs> it's hard for you to see. Maybe you can do one of those things where you I'm throw it. blow it up right yeah. here. Okay. Vanderbilt. It almost looks like he's a puppeteer. Yes. You know, like handling the the I forget what they're called. Those. Uh, the Mary. Oh, marionettes. Yes. Marionettes. Thank you. And he's the puppeteer, like yes. controlling the railroads. Yep. Just kind of kind of looking that he's the man behind the behind the scenes who is just controlling it. And when we talk about that marionette analogy that we're going to make that these guys are going to wind up controlling a lot as we move forward. Um, so to make this connect, uh, I'm sure we came up with this, but you know, if you look at this particular bar graph here, um, had, you know, here we are, we're looking at canals, and of course we're talking about over 500 miles of it, right? Had Cornelius Vanderbilt stayed with just the steamships and the canals, he probably would have went out of business. Um, and I know we probably talked about Netflix versus Blockbuster Video, but you know, he, he had, he had a vision. He was the able to see thought, that, yeah. yeah, the forethought. This is where we're going. <clears throat> this is where we're going. And if we, if we can, if this went further to the 1870s, 1880s, I mean, we're talking, the canals just basically disappeared. The Erie Canal in upstate New York is now like a tourist attraction. Now, had he lived longer, he probably would have went over to either the trucking uh -huh. or the airplane yep. industry, who knows, you know. Um, so when we're looking at eliminating competition, I think one of the things, when we're looking at consolidating or combine, I think hopefully maybe this cartoon kind of comes into your head where it mm -hmm. looks like you're combining. Of course, in the business sense today, you often hear of mergers where, where businesses come together, but um, he was consolidating. So small lines were too costly to run, uh, and they began to consolidate. Because as Mr. Cogan was bringing up before, you know, the, all of these different railroad companies, in order to keep these railroad companies going, you, Cost a lot of money, a lot of capital. You need to pay your workers, the rail lines, the coal, all of these things are going to keep that business going. And if you don't have enough capital to keep it going, 
be to go out of business or you merge with somebody else. So what we see with uh, Vanderbilt is that he winds up buying up all these small ones or he forces them out of business. Yeah, like business owners, you can take that profit that you're making and <clears throat> put it in your pocket. Yeah. And that's great. That's great. In the early years, he was taking the profit he was making and putting it put right into back business. into his yes. business. He was like, I'll suffer now because I see the end game. You know, the end game is me controlling the world. And a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of businesses, if you think in terms of even successful uh, sports franchises as well, you know, the, the ones that are successful, like for example, the Yankees, because you can say the, the Yankees, sorry, sorry, you know, a lot of money to spend, spend a lot. They, they put a lot of it back into the business. And what's the business? The players. We got Stephen Cohen. So that's why. That's now have a billionaire owner. That's why Fingers you crossed. see them putting that money back into their team, getting those big time players. And that, that, that argument can be made with other teams that have a lot of money. Vanderbilt used ruthless tactics to force smaller owners out of business. He owned most of the lines between Chicago and Buffalo. His companies control 4,500 miles of the track. Um, I know there's some sources, <clears throat> and even the men who made America, that kind of indicate that when you had to go from one line to his, he would charge more. Mm -hmm. And that was gonna hurt in terms of shipping. And then, of course, you know, once you don't have any competition anymore, that price then comes down. So, anything? I know we got the farmers right here. We'll, we'll like dip into this. No, I think maybe later we could. Well, then, because then we the rebates. We, rebates. I think we do this first, right? Yeah, and then yeah. We'll, we'll come back to okay. it. All right. So, <clears throat> when we're looking at this cartoon, and, we, and Mr. Kogan just mentioned before the marionettes and controlling things, if you look at this railroad, this is this is not the Thomas the engine that you grew up with. In fact, the name of this cartoon, I think, is The Railroad Monster versus The Farmer. It's a good name I for believe. it. I believe. Very original, too. <laughs> you know. But yeah, this is not Thomas. We see claws. It's almost like the, the grill, the cow catcher, as we yes. call it. You know, or like the teeth, the lights, or the eyes. Big <clears throat> billows of black smoke. It's got not like five or six cars. It's got hundreds of cars that are wrapping around a pretty important building here in the, in the back. Almost like it's controlling. controlling it. You, you said or before, money, it, money and yeah. power are the same, and this is the Capitol building in Washington D.C., where Congress take, where Congress makes our laws. And you know, indicating that you know, with the money, power, and laws, I would almost imagine that this cartoonist is indicating, hey, money and power, those laws that are going to be made by politicians, they may be paying off or whatever the case may be. Those laws are going to benefit the railroads. Yep. So. That's our trains. Over here, sometimes people get confused with this. This is your farmer, and he wants to beat up the railroad. And often students say, oh, it's because they're going through the farmland, it's pollution, all of those things. And those are great things to bring up. Unfortunately, they're wrong. <laughs> because really, what he's really upset about is the rebates he's not getting. Mm -hmm. So when you look here, the rebates that the trains were offering to people and other big businesses. Big business owners were offering discounts to other big business owners. Not I'm glad you used that, like rebates. Yes. So I literally, two weeks ago, yeah. just bought new tires for my car. There we go. And the question was, do I put Goodyear tires on my car or do I put Cooper tires on my car? Okay. And I'm talking to the guy that made this discount tire. I'm like, oh, you tell me. I'm like, I don't know anything about tires. They're made out of rubber. They're round. Like, yeah, they go. <laughs> they, they go around, um, and he's like, well, Cooper Tires right now has a mail-in rebate. You buy four, you mail in this little thing you fill out, they'll yeah. mail you back 100 bucks. So I was like, all right, so you're telling me they both bought this, it was $1,000 for right. four tires, you know, but I mail in, fine, I'll mail in the rebate, Cooper Tires sent me a $100 gift card. Perfect. That's all it is, the discount. Discounts, big time. Um, when we're looking here as well, uh, these railroads, I'm gonna offer rebates to the biggest customers. So if you're gonna have like a repeat customer, such as for example, uh, Standard Oil, which we'll get to in a moment, um, that customer is gonna come back to you constantly. Um, this practice is gonna hurt small businesses, you know, like for example, bigger businesses, like for example, your Amazons or, or your Netflix, they're gonna hurt smaller businesses because they can afford to provide a lower price to their customers, which is gonna maximize their profit. Now the pool, oof, this is always difficult to explain without a chalk. Yeah, it is. It's not one that you, you swim in. So let's say that this is an area, this square, maybe that'll help. 
I, 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 even I have a difficult time. I use I use supermarkets. Okay, perfect. I use supermarkets like to describe a pool. Yeah. Like everybody here knows Stop and Shop. Stop and Shop is kind of the biggest um, grocery store in Long Island. You go to Pennsylvania, there's no such thing as Stop and Shop. No. In, in Pennsylvania, it's Wegmans. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Everyone, everyone knows what Wegmans is. That. And you go down south to Florida, you've ever been to Disney, and you go to it's Publix. Okay. You know, and it's almost like in a pool, the companies are agreeing to each other. Like I'm Vanderbilt, and maybe you're my competition, but you're another railroad, maybe somewhere else. Is like, look, I'm not going to bother you. You don't bother me. This is my area. You stay out of my area. I'm going to stay out of yours. Right. That's kind of like the easiest way that I like. I don't know how you. And then, it. and then that, that's one way as yeah. well. And then of course you agree on the price. Right. On the prices that you're going to set. That's going to be the big one. So. Let's just say, for example, this is Pennsylvania here, or Pennsylvania. I like to refer to Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. So he's we, we're dividing up this area. Then he's got this zone, I got that zone. But he's not going to fix his prices too low or too high. That's right. going to put me out of business. And we just make a gentleman's agreement. Because the up. thing about competition, competition in the free market system, free enterprise system, yeah. as you said before, competition is good for the customer. Because if Mr. Heeg and I are both trying to get you to buy our products or to use our services, have a choice. We're going to lower our prices. Right. You know, so now it's like, all right, you that's your area, you stay out of mine, this is my area, I'll stay out of yours, but we're gonna say we don't go lower than ten bucks. Right. You know, we're gonna you know, we don't want what's known as predatory pricing of him coming into my area, undercutting me, this is what Walmart was famous yes. for, undercutting me and putting me out of business. So when we look at those, all right, of course when we talk about prices and lowering them, when it comes to the railroads, going back to that as well, when we're looking at eliminating competition, everybody needed oil. And you're going to be like, well, what, what do you mean, for, for cars? No, not, not for cars. I mean, you don't have electricity just yet. We don't have lights that are going by electricity. So you're going to use oil lamps. Of course, prior to that, how did you get oil? Well, whalers went out in the Pacific. They would kill whales, which is probably why they were almost extinct at one point. And you would use whale oil, and you would sell them. And whale, whale oil, or this oil, would be used for a variety of things, but the big thing that they needed it for was for lamps. And so, oil even started because oil was a safer way of lighting your home than candles, because candles were burning down people's houses. And everybody's homes yeah. are made of wood. Yeah. Um, so when you go back to, for example, this cartoon right here, you know, railroad companies were offering rebates you know, to companies like Standard Oil, which we're gonna deal with in a Entirely yeah. separate. Rockefeller's companies. Empire. Oh my gosh. They were all really ruthless, but you know, there's a lot of different expressions that can go along with this. You know, if you want to make an omelet, you got to break some eggs. Uh, nice guys finish last, uh, whether you agree with these quotes or not. Um, but they were, you know, you're not going to become rich by paying full yeah. price, I guess. Rockefeller was like the Babe Ruth of ruthless business owners. <laughs> Absolutely. So these are the pools we mentioned. Of course, there's a lot of money in, in whether it be oil or, um, for example, railroad, because all of these things that is going to come up quite a, quite a bit when we're looking at economies is, is job creation. Mm -hmm. If it creates jobs, people want it. And if people have money, what are they going to do with it? Spend it. They're going to be much, much happier. I remember reading a source once that by the late 1800s, a quarter of the American population worked for some capacity of the railroad. Whether it was as a lumberjack cutting down trees to, to lay to lay the tracks, as an iron worker, as a coal miner, oh yeah, as all as an actual ticket and, collector. And yeah. when one and when one industry and when one is is, is kind of like hurt, I guess you could say yeah. it's going to impact the other one. That's similar true. to what we're seeing in this in this whole epidemic that we're going through. You know, if the restaurants are going to rely on the on food yep. coming in and, and they're going to be impacted. I tell you, I I had. Because Standard Oil, these are one of the best like artifacts, antiques to get your hands on. There's a lot of them out there. People pay big bucks. I almost want to bid for something like this, like at like fifty or sixty I bucks. I have one too. student, one student in my nineteen years, dollars. who who looked at this and said, "Mr. Kogan, that, that looks, looks like really yes, familiar. that looks like Amoco." No. Yep. And I'm like, "You are a brilliant kid." Absolutely. You know, and we'll, we'll get, get more into that. Yeah, we'll let you get more into. It. I mean, but they had ashtrays, you name it. Yeah. All right, great. Thank you for watching.